Ubuntu drops the first round of metrics and Firefox asks if you've been pwned. The seventh gen nooks get Penguin certified and GitLab gets some updates. Pulse Audio 12.0 finally learns how to Bluetooth that is amazing and in a surprising move that vaguely represents sanity. Noom has decided to ditch the hamburger menu. All this and more is coming up because it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Penguins, Floss in general. I'm Vince Stoughton, mm-hmm. joined by Joe Bryant, and one Pedro mm-hmm. Mateus, spanning Hello. all the time zones. I think there's a <laughs> eight hour difference between those two. It's kind yep. of brilliant. So what, yeah. did you, what did you have for breakfast? No, what did you have for dinner? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so what's been going on before we get into it, Pedro? Um, England is on fire. I know that. And not, mm-hmm. not just with heat, but with actual fire. Yes, there is some yeah. actual fire happening uh, around the uh, Saddleworth Moor. So and it's been raging for three days. So that's that's significant. Oh. It needs to be handled quickly. Please. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, what's going on in LA? Oh, boy. So I finally got my blackout curtains installed. Mm -hmm. So now I won't be so bright on camera. So I do look, I think I do look a little better. (laughs) And (laughs) my husband, Steve, was able to install them by standing on my 90 pound Sun computer and my 150 (laughs) pound Dell Precision 690 workstations. (laughs) <laughs> no ladder needed here <laughs> this is great uh, you finally have the proper lighting we can break out the glow sticks man and yes yes oh and and yes i have lots of lighting to show in a future <laughs> it sounds delightfully terrifying um over here i haven't done a whole lot um i did some back end giggity stuff on our web zone site maps and stuff like that I added a podcast landing page so you can just go to podcast and just get our main shows and um what else did I do? oh peer tube we're on peer tube mm-hmm. i think i'm not 100 percent on that but our videos show up there we have a channel if that's your mm-hmm. thing and i've been having Yay. a network off <laughs> with jordan because he's setting up his version of jotunheim our new video bridge and I, i've started exploring the setting up a local instance here as well and i am absolutely rubbish at network <laughs> networking period keep me away from it never let me in your environment i mean, just, just torch it it'll be safer <laughs> uh cool let, let, let's get into this because uh canonical they've released some metrics Oh, yes, they have. So <laughs> you may know from a couple of months ago that we talked about how um, the Ubuntu installer now offers, if you'd like to send some uh, metrics, some telemetry, nothing personally identifiable, just some the um, the specs of your machine, uh, the options that you pick during the install itself, and uh, uh yeah, that's basically it. And they have released the first round. Will Cook made a little post on the Ubuntu blog. And you can see that the opt-in rate is two-thirds. Two-thirds of the people running the installer have decided to opt-in to uh, send the statistics back, which is very good. That gives them a lot of data to work with. And um, yeah, it's uh, one of the things that I found the most odd was the uh, installer options because... 90% of people want to download updates during installation. Only 53.43% of people uh, want the uh, audio and video codecs. And uh, only 28.25% of people want the um, auto login. Now, for me, I always install the codecs, and I never let you want to run uh, updates during the install because that slows it down mm. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do the same thing, Pedro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and um, uh, one of the other reasons I was thinking that 53.8% of the people in, in installing Ubuntu uh, uh, do the nuke and pave option is mm-hmm. uh, probably because of people coming back to Ubuntu because of GNOME and now being the default window manager. And also, yeah. uh, a lot of people do virtual machine installs, which I did on a, a few of the, my machines as well. And the 1804.04.1 update release isn't scheduled till July 26. So the, these metrics will probably change as soon as that is available. 
Hmm. And it True. it also doesn't surprise me that most Linux users in the survey use four hmm. gigs of RAM because of how memory efficient Linux is. And you would never see one gig of RAM with a modern Windows install, for shame. <laughs> then, then you would have to find the ever-elusive one gigabyte DIMM. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> here's what I think. Definitely with the four gigabyte install, I think that is a lot of butter robots, hashtag Rick and Morty. <laughs> because, you know, you're looking at devices like I'm getting ready to build some nooks. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. The amount of memory RAM that's going to be in that is going to be four gigs because that is the bare minimum I can get away with for the Nook to still be able to pass the butter. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to throw eight gigs or 32 gigs for a laugh, I might, but it wouldn't be practical. <laughs> and for the money, I, I do think maybe the metrics canonical might, might be a wee off. Uh, Jill, how many monitors do you have? Um, I have three, but I have had four set up before, but it was just one too many. Okay. <laughs> I, I couldn't keep track. <laughs> They're showing some with three. I, I have yeah, one, two, yeah. three, four, I have five. five. Yeah. <laughs> five and two virtual, so it thinks I have seven, and that's what it would report. Uh, not seeing that in there, but you did bring up the, you know, nuke from orbit option for installing, which I see a lot. Now, I, I think some of that might be mm -hmm. Windows-like behavior because... That, that's how you would upgrade Windows is nuke the mm -hmm. hard drive and reinstall. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I get that, but I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Because uh, with me, now I've had some really wicked bad uh, experiences jumping LTSs, mm -hmm. but nothing that couldn't be hammered out. But I've learned to keep track of any PPAs I have, make sure that's disabled, and to do my best not to compile stuff and install it. And if I do, keep track of it so I can remove it mm -hmm. before doing that upgrade. You know, any self self compiled uh, libraries or anything like that. So uh, I, I think it's safe to do an inline upgrade? Question mark. Yeah. If you don't have all those PPAs and you don't do all of that, yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I did it, and it went just beautifully. I just had to reinstall the NVIDIA PPAs and a few other PPAs, but that was yeah. it. It was smooth. Yeah, I did the <laughs> 1710 to 1804, and it went swimmingly enough yeah. to where I didn't trust this box for two days. Like, I was waiting for that other shoe to drop. Uh, I did notice 21.9% yeah. 20, manual uh, partitioning because yep. some yeah. people realize canonical there's yes. no place like home, home yes. partition. Seriously, why is that exactly. not default? Um, yeah, and uh, one thing I noticed is that they have a CPU count. Now, if you've seen those in previous uh, gatherings of statistics, you may be thinking, oh, those are threads. No, no, those are actual physical CPUs, yeah. uh, which in 2018 seems like a weird decision. It's like, oh, yeah, we have one CPU with 12 threads. Which one would you say is the most important count? Well, Canonical just proved it. It looks like yeah. there was what, 90 <laughs> or 85% of people were running uh, one CPU. Hmm. Wonder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of CPUs. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Um, this is exciting. Intel 7th Gen Nooks are now Ubuntu certified. And... Um, uh, this is this is a first and will aid device manufacturers and their developers to a smoother path to the development and deployment of Internet of Things devices. Mm -hmm. And this is this is actually a really big deal. And it's the first time this has ever been done. And um, I'm actually looking forward to putting an Ubuntu certified case badge on a Nook instead of Windows certified. That's that's the real big deal. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to publicly admit you run? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, most people see the Nooks like the average consumer sees the Nooks as, oh, it's a small form factor PC that you can put on the back of your TV because it's got like the vase amounts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you get to save the extra desk space or if you just have a very teeny tiny desk and you can only have the monitor, the um, a keyboard and the mouse and you don't want to put a big desktop uh, computer on the ground, well, just get a Nook for uh, regular web browsing. That's fine. But the enthusiasts, and I use this word because I know Strider loves it, it's uh, these are toys. <laughs> Nooks are toys. They're, mm -hmm. uh, as Ven mentioned earlier, they're robots that pass butter. And it's Linux just 
it's the perfect OS for a toy. Just exactly. as it can be, can be, because I've just I am like elbow deep in nook knowledge right now because I'm trying to get the best bang for the buck for our money to build in the two boxes for the videos. And you can get away cheap, but there are some redonkulously expensive i7 nooks not skull canyon stuff oh yeah nooks oh yeah that yeah. you know we're tapping 700 800 bucks and i'm like i don't understand i mean do, do you want your um plex box to have bragging rights or, <laughs> I, I don't know I'm, I'm a huge fan of overkill as well but hey it's good to know that you can put some canonical on there and uh mm -hmm. but then again I, I agree with you pedro they're, they're play around devices that because you can buy them wicked cheap. The ones that we're planning are like 120 bucks. So put whatever you want yeah. on there and have some fun. Uh, good news, yeah. I think, for Pedro is Pulse Audio, our favorite audio server that works 100% of the time. And we've never had issues with it. None uh, whatsoever. 12.0 is out. It's a thing. The A2DP, that's the Bluetooth support. It, this is a couple of big things in this update. Because mm -hmm. they're talking about better latency reporting. And Pedro, you had some questions about that. Oh yeah, so uh, two of the points in particular, uh, because I think it's the uh, the very first one that they uh, bring up. Yeah, better latency reporting, hence better AV sync with the A2DP Bluetooth profile, and the fact that the A2DP Bluetooth profile is now the default instead of uh, HSP, which is finally on that uh, second count. And for the first one, I always notice this because if you have a Bluetooth headset and you're watching a movie, watching a YouTube video, there's always a slight cutoff of silence. Mm -hmm. And then the audio, when the audio resumes, it comes back. Now they are, they say that this addresses that because what they did, clever on them, uh, was uh, reduce the buffer size on the kernel or in the kernel uh, to make it so it doesn't get out of sync as much because the buffer is smaller. So there's less to catch up on. Well, there's always going to be, well, I shouldn't say always because I've seen <laughs> good experiences. Um, I have some GoGroove Bluetooth headsets that I use with the Android devices sometimes when I'm around the house, like cleaning. It's adorable. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad they got this sorted. I've never really used it, even though, like, even here on this desk, I have a little Bluetooth. This thing, like, terrified me way back in the day because I plugged yeah. it in and it worked. Yeah. Didn't expect that. Mm -mm. I'm glad they got this sorted out. Uh, they did add support for the Dell Thunderbolt dock, the TB16 mm -hmm. speaker jack support. That's good. You got noise. And finally, you can lock the volume on an audio channel when, you know, on the multiple occasions that you can't disable auto gain control. And I'm just lying to you because <laughs> no one wants that feature. And they've refused to add it, even though it wouldn't uh... be terribly complex. Yeah, no, it would actually be nice to have that option. Pulse, please. Yeah. No, no, Pedro, don't say that you, the more that people want it, the <laughs> less chance of them ever adding it as a feature. So, uh, Walls of Fire. Oh, yes. So, oh, let's yeah. say uh, you are one of those people that just likes to reappropriate every computer on Earth for your own usage. I'm totally Marizzo Strider there. Um and you would like to, I don't know, maybe add some security to your network. Well, mm -hmm. you can turn one of those boxes. I, I got to interject, eight. Pedro, because I'm just reading this, like the article, the meat of it. All right. This is firewalls for Linux. And it's starting out with the explanation of what a firewall is. It's like, ooh. Yes. Really? <laughs> this is very clearly targeted at people that uh, they have an idea of what a fire, uh, firewall is, but they, well, they did, that's about all they know. It's a firewall. It's a thing. Um so, yeah, what they do is they actually go into all the different, uh, well, not all of them, but uh, a decent selection of uh, different firewalls, some of which are just bits of software you can install, some of which are whole distros that you could just turn a spare box that you have lying around into a hardware firewall, if so you'd like. Uh, the um, uh, Clear OS is pretty good. I have admittedly very limited experience with it but it is stupidly simple to set up it's uh they say that ip fire down uh near the end of the article they say that ip fire is like the best one if you just want to have a dedicated box uh for a firewall but i didn't even know it existed clear os it works mm. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually, I've used I, uh, IP Fire quite a bit. Um, I installed it not too long ago on a Raspberry Pi. And it's actually a great firewall distro for beginners and mm -hmm. has a really nice web interface. And um, so does ClearOS. It's, it's, it's really good for the beginners as well. And um, some of these distros, including IP Fire and ClearOS, are, um, have pre-installs on hardware blade servers and routers that you can buy from different companies, mm -hmm. which is is really cool. And um, a, a little history on one of them called Smoothwall Express. They, it's been around for years and um, has the best compatibility with older hardware. And it's actually what IP Fire and IP Cop are forked from. Um, um, uh, Smoothwall was the original that forked several of these distros. And I've also used uh, PFSense on my routers um, in recent years. Um, that's mm -hmm. been a staple in the firewall distro um, arena for many years. And But I also used to use DDWRT, which is not actually not mentioned in the article. But um, Ooh, speaking uh, of that's things one of the not best. mentioned in the article. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I know. Um, cover your ears, kids, because I'm going to be that guy. Um, mm -hmm. I've been playing around with the special hell of setting up something that's web facing. I don't envy anyone mm -hmm. who has to mess with that. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I'm like, what's the laziest thing I can do and learn the least and still be secure? It's like, oh, right. That 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 mm -hmm. should be easy. UFW. Why is that not mentioned? Mm -hmm. I think even our <laughs> theorem, which I did not know it, apparently GUFW, which I'm assuming is the GUI for it. Yes. And mm -hmm. I would just say UFW because that the thing speaks mm -hmm. English. And yeah. it mm -hmm. is so wicked easy to set up. But I'm guessing most of these do have a GUI component. But, um, you know, I've said it before, just, just run Zone Alarm and wine. You, you should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Black Ice Defender. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Re recommended man somebody quote me on that it'll be brilliant uh keep your routers updated too kids that's yes. I, yeah my network mm -hmm. had a uh update which was kind of screwy because it's like hey we have an update and i try to download it's like i can't download it so i had to go to their web zone and download it and do all that fun stuff uh firefox has kind of got their own um uh, not firewall but uh kind of a what, what would you oh yeah it? The, they are very much uh doubling down on the whole, we are the most secure browser thing. And well, they are now uh, working with the fine folks behind uh, Have I Been Pwned, which is like the massive aggregate da uh, aggregate database for the all the dumps uh, from the massive hacks that happened on LinkedIn, Patreon, Linux Mint, everything else. Uh, they all have like the lists of emails and the passwords that, uh, that the uh, the people behind those attacks successfully cracked. They have all of that, and well, with Firefox integrating it out of the box, it will uh, whenever you're say registering for a new website, it will scream, "No, that password's been uh, has been pwned. Don't use that one." Or that email has been pwned. Considering using another one, and there uh, the fine folks behind uh, have I been pwned are also going to be working with one password which is a password manager, mm -hmm. which will do the exact same thing. So uh, this is good. This is just good. Yes, please. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. To me, this goes a long way to making uh, Firefox one of the most secure web browsers available. <laughs> and they've been uh, true to their motto of dedication to security is top notch. Um, it's really, really awesome. And uh, <laughs> something I put in the show notes is, ironically, my email was pond back in 2015 when patreon got hacked and this is because i had just created an account for patreon to be become an lgc patron <laughs> and, and, and that was the first and last time that my account had been uh, uh compromised um i actually use a two-factor authentication whenever possible and change my passwords every six months so that's yeah. always been been my habit. And actually, yeah, I'm an old nerd. Um, I still use an encrypted floppy disk to store my account usernames and passwords. And having lots of vintage computers makes this very possible. <laughs> and I actually, I just checked that floppy disk and I still had my passwords from my old BBS days from the 80s and Prodigy. <laughs> 
this. So I keep it up to date. It's a big G edit file. <laughs> Man, monkey one, two, three. So is, <laughs> even with this, or the, I, I like this. This is a good feature. Something tells me they're still going to build a better idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody's going oh, to yeah. see that and they're going to go, eh, ignore, whatever, mm -hmm. don't care. Yeah, I know. And it's so easy now. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you punish them and make them use links. <laughs> yes. Or e links or W3M. <laughs> yes. You want to keep them secure. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of little bits of info um, mm -hmm. about the GitLab update 11.9. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So um, this is a really awesome. Uh, with, with this update, introduces auto DevOps. Which, which in three easy steps, uh, create your code, uh, push to GitLab, and, and then GitLab there is no will step actually, three. <laughs> <laughs> there's no steps, it says there's no steps three, because GitLab will, will uh, then build test, um, uh, code quality scanning, security scanning, license scanning, packaging, performance testing, deploying, and monitoring your application. Uh, so auto DevOps will, you know, basically almost do everything for you after you created your code to check everything and make every make sure everything's working correctly. And Hi, I'm um, with GitLab, and I'm excited. One of the points I was you. making is we have talked about before. It is because of GitLab's use of software containers and now deploying them on Kubernetes that auto DevOps software testing and management can even exist. Mm -hmm. And um, this is actually really, really. Um, amazing because of this new technology um i think this they, is definitely yeah. uh mm -hmm. gitlab you know it you love it and yeah the auto devops i'm digging that uh but you know, a lot of people it's like well, what about the other story about gitlab and i'm like yeah we, we need to talk about that because mm -hmm. earlier this week you know gitlab's like hey man we, we're getting off this azure business now this is something mm -hmm. that's been planned uh, i saw yeah. some misreporting they're like ah oh, they're doing it because microsoft and no, 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 no. Yeah. They were something. already doing yeah. it. Right. Yeah, they were already doing because they needed the Kubernetes. Well, the, exactly. The... I mean, it has nothing to do with uh, Microsoft acquiring GitHub, but they did want that Kubernetes goodness. However, it it would be irresponsible not to point out that Azure Kubernetes service, AKA, AKS, went into general availability earlier in June. So... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm question mark yeah good i was like wait wait so you're moving to google for that service that's available in azure now so it's not in, okay maybe they weren't in the original limited release so they decided yeah let's just go with GitLab. pedro i'm go trying to, to start google. rumors <laughs> quit be quiet <laughs> yes <laughs> all right uh something yeah. that struck dumbfounded me uh like this is like twice this month. Gnome's like, hey, look, mm -hmm. we're making sense. Um hat menu migration. All right, here's the problem. Uh, I think I might have been talking in an after show last week about this thing. Uh the hamburger menu. Yeah. They've seen it. Uh mm -hmm. it's junk. No one used it. Yeah, this 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 stupid monkey little thing. I see yeah. it all the time with G Edit, which I still use. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why why are you over here? Why are you on the wrong side? <laughs> How do I say I mean, yeah. when when your first thought was how do I deal with this? And they're like, okay, well, I finally got to the point where I can kind of use it. And like, yeah, we, we're, we're going to tap the brakes on that because it hasn't been seen with any adoption widespread. Mm -hmm. uh, good, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, hey, I just want to know what's up with the sudden return to sanity from the GNOME project. This is, this is not their modus operandi. No, but there was this big yeah. thing that happened. <laughs> yes. Perhaps the biggest LTS release this year, uh, Ubuntu 18.04, that has a bunch of people using GNOME and a bunch of people complaining about GNOME not making any sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And me, I just want to forget about hamburger menus altogether. And let's just mm -hmm. get back to completely using classic GNOME application menus, please. Well, hamburger I, menus make know. sense, Jill, on mobile. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they I, they actually do. But uh, on desktop, they're <laughs> a little clumsy. 
<laughs> yeah, and what they're doing right now, it's they're not completely doing away with it. They're just yeah. splitting out the different options into different hamburger menus. So instead of having the one button, you have a couple of more that you will easily be able to identify, you know, like uh Mac OS did off. after they ripped yeah. off uh <laughs> after they ripped off the gnome interface, Man, they listen. basically split the uh hamburger menu. I, I, I can have a hamburger menu, but give me like a Royale with cheese menu. <laughs> and, <laughs> let's just keep it fun quarter pounder, yeah. quarter pounder. uh hey that, mm-hmm. that's good bringing sanity because you know especially with gnome if I, if I just want to raise my blood pressure i can launch gnome and just like this is wrong this is all wrong i know some people love it more power to you that's a beautiful thing about linux is we can use what works for us but who um let's talk about something that works for me that's right eight reasons why you should use the ultimate desktop manager above all others <laughs> according to me xfce <laughs> linux desktop environment uh the, this linux desktop environment is thin and fast with an overall elegance that makes it easy to figure out how to do do other things good and something zoolander quote that's even on our patreon page and i forgot it um, <laughs> do other things good too <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, there's eight reasons we're talking about lightweight construction simplicity file management which is also good stability elegance terminal emulation uh come on you stretch the configurability yes module yes uh <laughs> one thing that I, i'm 100 percent on all this is going to be in our show notes uh if you're listening or watching after the fact linux gamecast go check that out is uh stability 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 mm-hmm. and I, I do pick on pedro but pedro's like yeah but i like my swishy blinky stuff and i understand <laughs> that this just the bare concept of my desktop manager crashing is like yeah what? i know <laughs> what no what's with that <laughs> yeah no okay yeah. when is uh is pretty bad at that and it yeah no uh having something like xfce is good especially since it's not as reliant on gtk3 as something like mate which let's wait, be honest you just wait for 14 buddy you're gonna have to take that oh back. yeah yeah yeah, oh, they're going to yeah. introduce that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, one of the reasons. Mate, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So one of the reasons I love um, XFCE is because it's easily configurable. And for me, that's I love configuring my desktops. It is. And I'm going to be the first person yeah. out of the box, uh, <laughs> how they ship it with, you know, it's like, do you want to create everything? When I was uh, repurposing the old render box just to start testing some of the uh, video inputs and how we're we going to be setting things up in the future. It's like, yeah, just give me the default. I was like, oh, that's wrong. That's all wrong. Because <laughs> the like start menus yeah. in the upper left-hand corner. I was like, yes. no, no, go no. back. Look like CDE because that's yes. what I go for. And it lets you do it because it's <laughs> yes. like, just give me some blank panels and let me put everything. <laughs> and some people are like, man, I need it pre-rolled. I don't need to mess with that. And I 100% respect that. But for old curmudgeons like me and Jill, um, yeah. <laughs> we, we just want a blank slate. And it has the added benefit of you can throw as many displays at it as you want. Yes. And it's just like, I don't care, man. Done. Yeah, cool. it works. Their, their uh, display settings um, for multi-monitor work beautifully also with NVIDIA settings manager. Because mm-hmm. there's there's mm-hmm. some there's some window managers where that actually crashes <laughs> when you go from one to the, ne- the next. And uh, uh, that's it's really awesome for that. And I also love it because it, it is lightweight. And I, I affectionately refer to it as Rodentia OS. It's always what I like to call it because it's got the little mouse that could <laughs> that goes across the screen. Speedy like a mouse. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Android messages, Jill. Android messages yeah. without having to install uh, KDE. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very true. And um, it's also nice that this is actually a standalone app that you can use instead of running a tab in a web browser to check your Android messages. And yes, as everyone has probably guessed, this is another Electron app. <laughs> wait, so. wait, 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 wait. So <laughs> instead of having your Android messages in, I don't know, a browser a tab, tab, now you can yeah. run an entirely different browser just for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just like we do of Discord and other applications. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. There's a very valid point. It was like, wait a minute. Instead of keeping it running in a tab, I, I can I can take what this project's done. Same thing with Discord or Slack or anything like that. 
you've shoved your web zone in, into an electric wrap piece of nope, then usually you've shoved that into like a snap package or something like that. Perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you get the yeah. full nope. You get the full nope. <laughs> this is a thing though. Uh, this is also available, like I said, with just your web browser. You can go to Google's new thing to set it up and you just, you know, do the QR code and you can do it directly through the browser. That's neat. When I saw this, there are some benefits to having a standalone app though, mm -hmm. as opposed to, yeah. Yes. And listen, mm -hmm. I don't love Electron. That's whew, that, <laughs> that that's a lot of memory RAM to chew up to, you know, have chat open effectively. But um I can dig this. Personally, I don't use this because I've had a desktop version of texting available on my desktop for years. It's called my mobile, my phablet, my <laughs> tablet. It's right there on my desk, yeah, right on my desktop. On desk. Um <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of a hard sell. Uh, yeah. I use, you know, I use discord. We use discord constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, they did a good job with it, but it is still memory hungry. Yes. Oh yeah. It is running mm -hmm. the uh, Chromium uh, embedded framework mm -hmm. or, or electron, if you want to call it that. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what, what do you think, Jill? Do you think electron, hang <laughs> Let's take a break from the show and just hate on Electron for like oh. another two minutes. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that in what, three weeks? <laughs> right. I think it's a very good technology. It just needs to be implemented a bit better and be more memory efficient. And I think once they get that down, it, 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 they'll, they'll why, why, why do you have improve. the slimmest hope that they're going to work, work towards memory efficiency? <laughs> oh, like, probably oh, not. Everything, yeah. Everybody has 16 gigs of RAM. Look at this canonical report. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Four wins. I know. I know. <laughs> that is a thing. Uh, I want to thank all the beautiful people making this happen. Every Wednesday, every Saturday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday. That's right. We stream five days a week. I think it's five days or four days. Yep. It's yes. terrifying. Uh, you guys made that possible by supporting us through Patreon or shopping through our Amazon affiliate links. We have almost all the countries there. And uh, that really helps out. And we even have a little wish zone. If you're like, screw it, we want to donate the hardware because we're trying to build a monster right now, something that's never been done, and I'm documenting it. It mm -hmm. is terrifying. New egg links, we got a humble partner. Part of that goes to charity. It helps out. And hey, we get some of that coin. We have Libra Pay. That's there along with PayPal, which is still a thing, mm -hmm. and some magic internet mm -hmm. monies. But Pedro, Joe. <laughs> Yay. We, we gotta thank uh, some new patrons this week. Well, not new, not new. These, these are what would you? How, how do we put it? Like super patrons? They're like, hey man, yeah. we're gonna make yes, a green. They're super and say uh, super Saiyan patrons. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Who do we got this week? Yeah, uh, Cred Z increased uh, ple their pledge, and so did David S. Thank you so much. Ooh. That was And awesome. I think that uh, that puts us at a certain milestone, doesn't yes. it? No, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes. Pedro, I told you don't do crack before the show. Nothing has changed. Nothing's gonna happen. No. It's gonna be the regular old oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nothing's changed except two hundred and sixty dollars from one hundred eighteen patrons, which means we'll periodically do limited runs Yay. of shirts, posters, novelty mirrors, and flamethrowers. <laughs> Yay! We get Make Friday for bar shirts. <laughs> this is this is truly hor terrifying, horrifying. As long as this holds towards the end of the month. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be a thing. And we, I got some designs. I got, I got to talk with our art department. You know who you are. And <laughs> our shirt is extraordinaire. Well, yeah. I got some ideas. They're going to be basic. It's probably going to be Model T. You can have it in any color you want, as long as it's hot pink. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, if you got four quarters and you want to help this uh, little dog and pony show out, uh, consider becoming a patron. Plus, you get access to our yeah. Discord, which is a weird place. It's kind of cool. We've got 100 people hanging out in there talking about everything, and they're strangely polite. And you get access to our pre-pre-super shows, in, which is our mm -hmm. weekly production meeting, which is a good time to come check that out because there's a video component of us failing hard because it's everyone's favorite time of doing new things with our streaming and video setup. And uh, I think the last one was called the Nope Cascade. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it was delicious. Yeah, it Much like this next segment. It's called a slice Ooh. of pie. 
Bye. <laughs> yes, and well, uh, it could be delicious, yes, but uh, don't drink soap, kids. It's it's not good <laughs> for you. So uh, one um, enterprising um, person, he calls himself Les Pounder, and, <laughs> and he, uh, well, he had a raspberry pie, and he went to Poundland, and he found that thing that you see on video, which is a very plasticky blue and brown thing that blows bubbles electronically. That's the big uh, thing. So he decided to put his Raspberry Pi to use, uh, along with a motor and uh, some, well, a liberal dose of hot glue to make sure that none of the soapy water made it to the pie. And, well, the, not content with just having a pie powered uh, soapbox he also decided to connect it to twitter and Mm -hmm. what happens when you tweet with that particular hashtag it sends out all the bubbles (laughs) (laughs) i was right at the end of that (laughs) so everyone out there uh uh, hashtag lgc cares to to make them life miserable because he's gonna be building one today (laughs) (laughs) you see the that that's half right. Uh, th- listen, um, I, I first saw this. Let me let everyone in on how, how my brain meets works. So I was like, oh, geez, that that is truly horrifying. That bothers me on certain levels. It's like you know what would make this interesting. What would make you want? It's like you know what would make make this fun. Hydrogen, um, <laughs> which quickly led me to YouTube, and was like, how difficult is? It's like, wait a minute. It's it's that easy to make hydrogen bubble bombs, <laughs> which then led to, well, I know what I'm doing this evening. <laughs> yeah, your neighbors are going to have a special brand of hate reserved for you tonight. Not really, because I'm also the mad scientist in the neighborhood. So when things break, they got to come, you know, like, oh, I fix this. Uh, we, we don't have a... HOA in my hoity toity neighborhood, but man, they I bet they wish they did after I got in here. Um, <laughs> it is kind of brilliant. Actually, I'm a oh, decent neighbor. I, I We have that like neighborhood texting thing, and I, I'm always polite and be like, that loud explosion is going to be me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> true story. Uh, that is our slice of pie. We got a little bit of feedback this week, Pedro. How can the beautiful party people get in touch with us? Well, you can reach out and touch us if you so like. Stay away from me. Uh, it, or, you know, the best way to actually let us know what you think is to go on over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure to pick LWDW, put in your name, your email address, the subject, the message that you'd like uh, to share with us, be it some criticism, some feedback, some, I don't know, something we didn't talk about in the show that you would very much uh you feel like uh, it was a big misstep on our part or you know hence thoughts allegations and as usual things better left and said so this week we actually have two bits okay. of feedback which is <laughs> really really nice and the first one comes from don and he says uh 2018 at ven i agree with you on region locking in 2018 this is from the um discussion that we were having about the region locking and how Google seems to be prolific at that. See, I took, I, I, I took the Pepsi challenge on this one because I didn't remember what this was about. I just assumed it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, it's... Um, uh, he, he goes on to say, I blame the media companies and their close-mindedness to change with the times. I realize that they need the revenue, but so far they seem to be encouraging people to find workarounds, thus shooting themselves in the foot trying to stop the piracy. Precisely. You could sell a legitimate thing if you made it widely available. If you're deliberately blocking it in certain countries, guess what? People are going to pirate it. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Region locking doesn't work in 2018 yeah <laughs> you, you're wasting money and you're wasting people's time you're not gonna win mm-hmm. um do they even bother re- well okay i guess <laughs> now steam does you you could argue this uh they don't necessarily region lock but they kind of price lock yeah yes they mm-hmm. price lock and they give developers the option that if they want to they can region lock their games and I would assume that physical media like Blu-rays and DVDs are still region locked 
to which I would Love report the DRM. Oh, yeah. what, what what be this digital uh, wait, <laughs> like hard copy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which I know somebody's out there like I just bought a 4K TV and it's amazing, and that that's cool. But I I don't I don't like hoarding stuff, so I don't collect <laughs> movies. Yeah. I have friends like that, and I'm like. And Google is, in my opinion, the worst <laughs> offender. They have yeah. region locked podcasts on the Play Store out of Portugal. You Pedro, can't. Pedro, yeah. I, I just did that to mess with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not just Portugal. It's Portugal. It's Spain, uh, Italy. And a few other European countries. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to bring this up, though. It, do you think Google was doing that because Portugal did something and said, hey? <laughs> 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 well, there is that tax that Portugal has on yeah. storage mm-hmm. that basically brings to law the whole private copy thing that everything you have on that hard drive is yours. Mm. <laughs> This is true. Uh, yeah. what, what do you think about DRM and 20? Well, not DRMs and a whole different <laughs> can of chainsaws. Yeah. Uh, we, region locking is locking. part of it, yes. Jill, thoughts? Yeah, do you love I, it? It's your oh, favorite thing? I hate it. I, I hate it. I was <laughs> I was happy when, when I got away, away um, uh, stopped using uh, DVDs for that reason. That was so annoying having all the different regions because I'd buy DVDs from, <laughs> from England and then um, have to hack them to play them here and and I, I've always hated hated that. And Google, well, you, you would have to like rip you. them because I still have a ton of stuff uh, oh, yeah. that I brought over with, that are in PAL. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I actually hacked a, a US to, player to play PAL. And by PAL hack, this. we mean we put it in handbrake and ripped it. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> handbrake is awesome. <laughs> Gets us done. Uh, Joe H writes in mm-hmm. overnight. Well, this is, this is going to be a fun one. Here's a little thought experiment for everyone at home. <laughs> Might be a ridiculous question, but is there a single thing, things, that would both advance Linux as a whole while spreading adoption overnight, question mark, like Microsoft Wine, or maybe, I guess, maybe Microsoft Linux would also work? I don't Hmm. Uh, mm. Yes. Uh, introducing yeah. some matter of complete... compatibility between Windows applications and the Linux operating system would move a lot of people over. No questions. Uh, And especially it would move entire very poor countries over. That's the big one. Mm. That's the big one right there. And it's... I don't think it's the Mm. best way to do it, ideologically speaking. Because <laughs> all right, all right, Pedro, I tell you this a lot. I'm hearing a lot of problems. I'm not hearing any solutions. Yeah, it's <laughs> ideologically speaking, the thing that we would need uh would be for developers to actually start supporting Linux. But that's never going to happen. Uh Adobe has proven time and time again they do not want uh to uh support linux when it comes to they're not going to do it until they're forced okay maybe maybe yeah. wine and microsoft yeah. branded wine that's a bit much what about microsoft uh brings over dx complete uh, yeah. direct uh, support on linux yeah that would uh, games would literally be a recompile away from a Linux binary. Ish, ish. I'm, ish. I'm saving you, Pedro. Um, <laughs> yes, it's the Unity just click export thing. You would still have to test it. Jill, obviously. how would you single handedly advance Linux and spread adoption? What would be your one thing? Uh, honestly, uh, bringing all the games to Linux. <laughs> just like what we were we were saying. That that is definitely one of the big things that's preventing a lot of. Uh, a lot of gamers and a big chunk of uh, the population from coming over and uh, having <laughs> bringing uh, <laughs> Microsoft Office over. <laughs> I know it's it's horrible to say, but that Office that is well, one. Yeah, in a way they have because Office 365. Yeah, is the 365. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's but, online. <laughs> but just just having more of the like Pedro was saying, um, uh, more of the apps uh, brought over to uh, Linux in including all the Adobe apps. Although yeah. our, all our alternatives are getting so good now that they're surpassing Adobe in a lot of areas. So yeah, um, but you're never going to but, convince a yeah. diehard Photoshop user that yeah, again exactly. can do the same thing. It no, may, but because but the Photoshop the Illustrator, anybody's yeah. going to walk out and there's like uh, YMC support, and you're going to like all right. 
Never mind. <laughs> but, but the new Adobe Creative Cloud does run fine in wine. So, <laughs> so. we'll see it. Now, if I had to just say, well, this thought experiment is like, okay, here's, here's what you <laughs> write in. I want to see some emails next week. Uh, use their contact form. G- give us like the thing that would do it. Because I, I thought about this for a minute. And yeah. it's like, okay, so your, your challenge, if you choose to accept it, advance Linux and what was it? Uh, spreading adoption. Mm-hmm. There's one company that can do this, I believe. Valve. Pedro already yeah. knows where I'm about to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I, I'm going to throw a modifier in here. I want to see if we can get a twofer out of it. <laughs> Naturally, I'm sure a lot of you at home know what I'm about to say. Half Life 3. Yeah. <laughs> Linux exclusive. Okay, that's a given. Portal 3. I'm uh, no, 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 no. I got to throw my <laughs> modifier. Half Life 3, Linux exclusive, only runs with Wayland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to advance yeah. technology? You want to force people to start? You want, you want NVIDIA to release those drivers? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no. We're supporting Wayland th- the way they won now. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how I would do it. Yeah. Uh, um, and another the thing is just educate, educating yes. the, the public, like in the, the schools, I teach my students how to install Linux. You also well, got to no, remember you know, in 2018, just... the average person's computer is the mobile. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, that's true too. Yeah. Cell phones and tablets. So, and ultimately that's, you, people don't need to know what they're running as long as mm-hmm. it, at the end of the day, I know that's an pop, but that's the ultimate goal. I think is to have something that's usable. It doesn't matter. It's going to be running Linux. It's going to be running Microsoft. Have you, have you yeah, seen? Go ahead. It's it's the uh, the laptops uh, manufacturers and distributors. If they yeah. can load Linux onto their uh, units that are going Giggity. to stores, yes, yeah. uh, and they can do so without feeling like, yeah, no, we're just uh, living on borrowed time until people realize, oh, this isn't Windows and we can't run everything. Uh, so yeah, if they could do that, if there was the software support from big developers for Linux, I think that that would be the thing that would change it all, in my opinion. All right. Yeah, like, uh, like what Google is doing with Chromebooks. That, that, yes. that, that's, kind of getting, that's a big deal. Even Adobe we is supporting Chromebooks. See it. All right, I'm going to hose you two off in a minute. we we got to get out of here. Come on. Calm down. <laughs> Tap the brakes. Um, it's been beautiful. It's been fun. It's been real. I want to thank everyone for showing up watching us live. Uh, if you're listening after the fact, thanks for giving it a download. It is a podcast. I know I had somebody last week's like, wait a minute. I just saw the download and I was like, yeah, and there's an RSS feed. Put it and he was like, oh, and we're even on iTunes. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Tomorrow, uh, you can tune in. Jordan, maybe even Jill and Sandy. Yeah. They do their thing. Uh, Friday we're gonna be trivia. Play that's going to work. All right. <laughs> we'll see how <laughs> that works. And Pedro will be chewing on glue sticks until Saturday. And it's going to be awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> they taste so delicious. <laughs> it's not his fault. Let's roll those credits and take a look at all the beautiful. I oh, may or may not have hit my head several times when I was a child. <laughs> yeah, so on the Friday food bar, we're going to play more Jackbox games. That'll be fun. Oh, we are? Uh, well, you, you said we were. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> And I see an updated introduction uh, credits here. Oh, what's going to get cray cray next week? I got some new stuff. <laughs> this one, I, I wanted to Looking go out good. on this one before I make a new background because this one's going to drive Frenchie insane. Yeah. <laughs> this one, this is me intentionally trying to jack something up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chevron. <laughs> <laughs>